Hi, my name's Janelle and in this series, I'm going to be showing you how to go from knowing absolutely zero about sewing to being able to make your own wardrobe. I don't use big words or overcomplicate things. I just plan on showing you what I've learned over a decade of making my own clothes and share all the tips and tricks I've learned along the way to make sewing a whole lot easier. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use an overlocker, also known as a serger, and I'll also be sharing my thoughts on whether or not they're worth the investment. So what is an overlocker? An overlocker is a machine that uses a blade to trim away the excess fabric of a seam and also uses a specialty stitch that neatens up the raw edges of the fabric and prevents it from fraying. When I used to work at a fabric shop, I was always told that there were two types of overlockers, three thread overlockers and four thread overlockers. The difference being that four thread overlockers not only neaten the raw edges of the fabric and prevent it from fraying, but it also has a thread that acts as a construction stitch. Something else you'll find out when looking into overlockers is something called the differential feed. The differential feed is a setting on most overlockers that can change the look of the overlocked fabric by either stretching it out or gathering it up. This means you can have a bit more control over the look of your overlocked fabric and means you can create some fancy decorative hems such as lettuce hems. I personally don't think it's worth buying an overlocker without the differential feed feature. First up, let me show you how to thread an overlocker. Overlockers are known for being notoriously difficult to thread, but in saying that, the more modern the machine, the easier it is to thread. So let me give you a rundown on the different parts of an overlocker and how to thread them. So for my overlocker, and bear in mind, yours may differ slightly to mine, we have the spool holders, the thread guides, the tension dials, the presser foot, the stitch length dial, the hand wheel, the differential feed lever, and a front cover which can be removed to reveal the inside of the machine, which we're also going to need to get familiar with. So inside the machine we have the blade, the seam width adjuster, the upper looper, the lower looper, and a whole range of hooks and latches that we'll be using to thread this machine. For an overlocker, it's recommended to use thread cones like this. To thread the machine, you'll need to start by extending the thread guide and place the threads onto the thread holders. Most modern machines will have a color code for each of the threads and should also have diagrams on the machine itself to show you exactly how to thread your machine. For my machine, I need to thread the machine in the order one to four. It's important to thread your machine in the correct order, otherwise it will not be threaded correctly. Also an important safety note, because of the blade, make sure you always have your machine's power off while you're threading it. So let me show you how to thread my Singer Overlocker, remembering that your machine may differ slightly to mine. First things first, make sure all of your tension dials are set to zero. Starting with thread number one, that is color coded red, I pass the thread from back to front through the thread guide, then latch the thread onto the hook at the back, pass it between the tension discs, and then pass the thread into the hooks and latches inside the machine as indicated by the red dots. Then lastly, I thread the upper looper from front to back and pull so there is a good 10 centimeters or four inches of excess thread. Now I need to thread thread two or the yellow thread. Again, like thread one, I pass the thread through the thread guide, latch it onto the back hook, and then pass it through the tension discs. I then turn the hand wheel so that the lower looper is visible and then pass the thread into the hooks and latches inside the machine as indicated by the yellow dots. I then use a pair of tweezers to latch the thread onto the back of the lower looper and then thread the lower looper and pull a good amount of excess thread. Now it's time to thread the upper threads of the machine, starting with thread three or the green thread. Starting by passing through the guide, the hook and the tension discs as we did for the other threads and then latch the threads into the two hooks positioned at the front of the machine. 
and then also latch it onto the top part of this larger hook as indicated by the green dot. Then pass the thread through the right hand side needle hook and then thread the eye of the right needle, again pulling out a bit of excess thread. Then lastly, I thread thread four or the blue thread, just as I did for thread three, but this time I follow the blue dots and thread it into the left-hand side of the hook and needle. I then change the tension to approximately four for normal stitching. And the overlocker is now ready to start sewing with. If this all seems a little bit overwhelming to you, that is perfectly understandable and don't worry, there is a hack to make threading an overlocker way easier. When you need to change the threads, instead of threading your machine as I just showed you, you can instead simply cut the threads as close to the cone as possible. Then tie your new threads onto the old threads. Set your thread tension to zero and then gently pull on the old threads to thread the new threads into your machine. Then simply change the tension back to normal and your overlocker is automatically thread up with your new threads and ready to go. I use this threading hack all of the time, but in saying that, I do encourage you to practice threading your overlocker as much as you can to make it a little bit less intimidating. From time to time, things go wrong and you will have to manually thread your machine, and there's nothing worse than not being confident about how to go about it, and trust me, it does get easier the more you do it, and honestly, by now, it has become completely second nature by this point, and I'm pretty sure I could almost thread this overlocker with my eyes closed. Next, let me go through some of the common stitches you'll use with your overlocker. First up, we have the four thread overlocker stitch. This stitch will only work if you have a four thread overlocker. Set your machine tension to four. Again, this may vary depending on your machine and set your stitch length to three. Also make sure your seam width adjuster is set to S and your differential feed is set to one. And as you can see, this stitch creates a construction stitch as well as an overlocked edge. And this is the stitch I tend to use 99% of the time for all of my overlocking. Next, there is the three thread overlock stitch. Set up your machine settings exactly the same as for the four thread overlock stitch, but remove the thread four and the left needle. This creates the overlock stitch without the construction stitch. So it's basically just an overlock stitch to help prevent the raw edges from fraying. Next we have the rolled hem. The rolled hem is a really great way to hem lightweight fabrics such as crepe and chiffon, but should not really be used for heavier weight fabric. Remove the left needle and set the seam width adjuster to R. Then set the machine length to in between F and two and set the differential feed to one and the tension to three, five, and three. Again, this may differ slightly for your machine. Then stitch as normal, but as you stitch, the fabric will roll ever so slightly, which creates a really beautiful finished rolled hem. And lastly, let me show you how to do a lettuce hem. To sew a lettuce hem, set your overlocker to the same settings as for the rolled hem, but instead set the tension to seven, four, and eight and set the differential feed to 0.7 or the lowest it can go. By changing up the differential feed, it will gather up the fabric ever so slightly to create a decorative lettuce hem that looks a little something like this. You may occasionally also find that you want to use an overlocker stitch without the cutting blade, and if that's the case, you can simply disengage the blade by turning the hand wheel so that the blade is at its highest position. Then push the movable blade holder to the right as far as it will go and then turn the blade dial away from you until it clicks into position towards the back of the machine. Then just simply push the movable blade holder to the right again and turn the blade back into position to use your machine normally again. So are overlockers worth it? If you're just starting out on your sewing journey, you do not need an overlocker. 
full stop. Some sewing machines actually come with an overlocker stitch nowadays, which can be very effective, but you can also just simply use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine to create a faux overlocker stitch. However, if you are starting to get into making your own clothes in a big way and you want to up your sewing game, then an overlocker is the best way to do that as they'll make your clothes look a lot more professional on the inside and will also make your handmade clothes much more better quality as well, which will therefore help your clothes to last even longer than they normally would. I personally found my overlocker to be a complete game changer when it came to the quality of my sewing and I would not be without mine. So I hope that this video has given you more confidence when it comes to using your serger or overlocker and in the next Sewing for Beginners episode I'm going to be sharing my best money saving tips for sewing so make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on that. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching!